scattered throughout many different universities and, and exactly all right got it exactly and um i mean so I mean, all of the the you know the the major players i mean clinton phi beta kappa hillary clinton phi beta kappa condoleezza rice phi beta kappa so uh, you know so there's um you know a very very good chance that uh, when you're googling anyone say if they're not yale then they're phi beta kappa and then the control is managed uh beyond the fraternities the control is then managed within the US through Freemasonry. Um, and what you have is you have a very, very senior group of Freemasons in the US called the Shriners. Right. Who are all 32nd degree Freemasons. And Freemasonry is much more open in the US than it is here in, um, uh, in, in Europe. Mm. Um, so the Shriners, I mean, the Shriners can often be found at you know, hotels, at weekends, um, quite often totally wasted. Um, because they're partying away, um, but they they they're easily identifiable because they wear these Moroccan fezzes. That's right. <laughs> but um, but these are absolutely part of the hidden hierarchy. So that when the inner sanctum decides on an event, this is how they ensure complete confidentiality. Because anybody who dares to breach the confidentiality is liable to. Um, to some pretty serious censure. So, and I'm going to give you an example of that now because mm -hmm. um, there is an individual who in the US was actually making quite a name for himself on the uh, TV channels, particularly Bloomberg TV and MSNBC ever since um, the Deepwater Horizon disaster. Matt Simmons. Uh, uh, Matt Simmons, you got it in one, absolutely. Yes. Now, for 10 years, Matt Simmons and I have not exactly seen eye to eye. <laughs> well, he is uh, Club of Rome, uh, CFR, isn't he? He is indeed. He's absolutely Club of Rome, CFR, and uh, one of the major proponents up until July of 2008, he was one of the major proponents for the hypothesis of peak oil. That's right, exactly. That's right, yeah. And in fact, I have offered uh, conjecture, which... Um, you can find in an article that I posted on the web a number of years ago that, uh, you know, Matt Simmons and John Deutsch were actually the guys who baited Mike Gruper into popularizing the whole of the peak oil story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, Matt Simmons um, uh, after, it was an investment banker. And I mean, his, his main interests, obviously, for much of his life were the oil industry. And um, because he was banging the drum about peak oil and that, you know, it was a scarce resource and he was at, he, hoping to promote the whole concept of artificial scarcity. And, and of course, during that time, he was a friend of the oil industry. But after the oil price crashed from $147 a barrel in June of 2008, and it crashed down to 35 before being artificially set at around about $75 where it hovers today. But at that point, I believe that Matthew Simmons actually realized that the whole peak oil construct was, um, was artificial. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually think that Matt had a uh, sort of an epiphany. Um, and he decided that he didn't want to be part of this hydrocarbon manipulated economy. And, and so he set up a company called the Ocean Energy Institute, which had as its, its objective the um, construction of um, massive wind farms off the coast of Maine, just like have actually been constructed off the southeast coast of, uh, of the UK mm -hmm. and just been bought online in, in the UK. But Matt Simmons' game plan was to build these massive wind farms and his objective was to um, provide his home state, which was Maine, his home state with uh, electricity generated by offshore turbines by the year 2020. Mm -hmm. Well, at that point, of course, Matt Simmons became an enemy of the oil industry. Hmm. And so the oil industry started to distance itself from Matt. Well, until the BP Deepwater Horizon disaster, you know, the two really didn't cross paths. But once Matt started to go on to the US uh, TV stations and basically make it very clear that he thought BP were lying, that... Um, uh, the federal government was lying, uh, that you know, basically they weren't making any real effort to cap the well, they weren't making any real effort to clean up the gulf, that they were, were lying about the magnitude of Corexit, the dispersant, which mm -hmm. was being poured into the oil. And 
Henrik, we have to go back and talk about Corexit in a, in a little while. That's okay? right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Matt was uh, starting to become extremely vocal uh, regarding the uh, negligence of both BP and the collusion in that negligence by the federal government. And, and I have to add here as well that because I was following this particular story because I was interested in how is it that a guy can can sit here in mainstream media and basically uh, get free reign, if you will, to to spread some of these, if you will, actually conspiracy theories that he did uh, come out with the fact that there was another leak at another site that BP wasn't taken care of. He was suggesting for a while there that they actually nuked the whole site as well, as far as I uh, remember. Well, that that's true. And I have to tell you, that was about the only thing that I disagree with Matt on <laughs> in that period. Right, right. Because, I mean, that is ludicrous. I mean, the Russians actually did that in, I think, 1973. Mm. They put a limited nuclear device down a gas well they had some problems with in uh, Siberia. And it, it shouldn't surprise anybody that they've never done it again. <laughs> that's right, exactly. <laughs> and, and they still have some problems with that. So, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I don't know why Matt was sort of putting forward that hypothesis. But, I mean, that was really the only thing he was saying in this period that I disagreed with. But then um, something very significant happened. And um, like I said, July the 23rd is indelibly printed on my brain because July the 23rd is the day that um, um, I was recording the DVD, BP um, uh, Population Reduction. And it was also the day that all shipping was instructed to leave the Gulf of Mexico. Now, it was instructed to leave the Gulf of Mexico supposedly because of the imminent arrival of Tropical Storm Bonnie. Hmm. Now, uh, so this is standard practice. Whenever there's going to be a massive storm or a hurricane, then, you know, there's a shipping advisory put out and the ships are told to either leave the Gulf or get into harbour. The rigs are evacuated and then, you know, the storm blows over and everyone goes back to work. Hmm. Well, what was significant here? was that um, on July the 23rd, of course, because all the shipping was removed from the Gulf, it meant the live feed that had been being put out um, by BP from their cameras, their sub, uh, subsea cameras, the live feed on the well was cut. Mm, that's right. So for, for a few days, there was no live feed. Now, just before the shipping all returned to the Gulf, somehow, remarkably, BP was able to get out to the rig, but not just get out to the rig, they were able to tow their 400-ton top hat, which they had supposedly had constructed specially, to lower on top of the leaking well. Mm -hmm. And somehow, before anybody could get a camera down to the seabed, they had completed the operation of lowering this top hat onto the well, and then before any cameras were switched on, they announced to the world that the problem was solved, the well was capped and that the oil was now being um, uh, recovered. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. So when the remote cameras went back on, then um, what they were showing was a capped well. So all of a sudden, instead of gushing oil, what the cameras were showing was just the seabed. Now, Matt Simmons spotted something here. Hmm. Matt Simmons noticed that the lambda coordinates in the top left hand uh, um, picture of the cameras had changed. Now, you remember I told you that this was well B that had blown out. Right, well right. A had been drilled earlier and mm -hmm. been lost. Right. Well, Matt Simmons spotted that the Lambda coordinates that were now on the camera feed, which was being presented to the world as the newly capped well B, was in fact showing the Lambda coordinates of well A. How how much of a distance are we talking about here, do you think? Not that, not that far, right. but far, far enough away for it to be well A. Because what the, in the documentation, the BP, I mean, the documentation is, um, is freely available on the web. Mm -hmm. And what you can see is you can see the very specific lambda coordinates of well A and well B. And what Matt Simmons noticed was that the lambda coordinates in the top of the picture now corresponded with the lambda coordinates of well A. So you know, there's, there's no way this was um, an accident. There's no way the camera was just in a slightly different position. This was the camera on the completely different well. This is interesting. Uh, I did not hear that, actually. No. Okay. So, anyway, well, Matt Simmons, well, like always, as always, Henrik, you know, I don't expect anybody to take anything I say at face value. 
you know, because I absolutely encourage people to investigate this for themselves. I mean, this is the, this is the difference between, you know, those of us who are loosely classed as sort of being amongst the truth movement and the mainstream media. Mm. The mainstream media tries to control the narrative. The mainstream media is telling people what they are supposed to think. You know, we, we do completely the opposite. You know, we, we share our research, we share our insight, our conjecture, but then we encourage people to go away and actually investigate it for themselves and That's come right. to their own conclusions. That's right. And, and it's no different here. So, I mean, I'm not really, I'm not going to be saying anything that I know people can't actually go and uh, find for themselves. Figure out, yeah. yeah. So, the, Matt Simmons went on to um, MSNBC, I think it was, and basically let rip. And he said, you know, this lie has now become completely outrageous. You know, this lie is, is so great. And, and Matt Simmons actually said, I don't even think they've capped the well. Yes, yeah, so that's what's interesting because I remember hearing him say there's another one, like, you know, elsewhere, the, another leak somewhere else. And I can't remember if this is the way the media kind of contrived his message, if you will, in that sense, or if he actually said that himself, which made me think, okay, he's, he's not talking about the same thing, and I didn't hear this particularly about the Lambda coordinates as well, but uh, go ahead, Ian. Well, there, there, there was another well leaking anyway. Mm, yeah. I mean, there's no question. That, and so, you know, it, it, there may have been some ambiguity, but, I mean, there was another well leaking. In fact, there had been another well leaking bef since before even the um, uh, BP Deepwater Horizon disaster. Mm. Um, but it, obviously it wasn't a leak to anything like the same magnitude. That's right. Yeah. And, it, and in fact, I do believe that it was the other leak that was the trigger for Goldman Sachs selling 44% of their BP stock holding in late March. That's right. It was uh, just a few uh, few weeks ahead of the whole thing. It was indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And of course, there's another great amazing coincidence, and that is that uh, Halliburton actually acquired a company called Boots & Coots, which is one of the four companies in the world that has the experience to handle um, extreme oil field um, fires and um, blowouts. And, and Halliburton acquired that company, which is called Boots and Coots, on April the 12th of this year, mm -hmm. just eight days before the uh, disaster. So that was a remarkable coincidence as well. So in one way here, I don't want to jump ahead here, but in one way here, what you're saying is that that they potentially have managed to get this, this and they obviously understand that there's many different motives here as well. But if we look at it from the point of view of, let's say, Halliburton and still bring up the, the, the greed aspect as well as one of the, the uh, possible oh, scenarios, absolutely. Absolutely. then we can see that, OK, they've, they've made this happen. But at the same time, they've also managed to acquire the companies who are going to be responsible uh, for the, the cleanup, much as we can see in Iraq, you know, sponsoring the, 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 the promotion of the war and then, of course, the rebuilding of the infrastructure in, in, in the, the country that they're invading as well. Exactly. Oh, exactly. And, and I mean, as, um, as any of your listeners who uh, uh, have heard our earlier discussions, you know, I was one of the first civilians to go into Kuwait at the end of the first Gulf War. And that was actually the trigger that started me on you know, this journey because it was very evident to me from the uh, physical evidence that it wasn't the Iraqis that had set the wells alight in 1991. Mm, that's right, that's right. It was the U.S. Special Forces, and of course it's once again the same thing. Mm. You know, you create the problem, which is set the wells alight, it gives you the opportunity to demonize Saddam, and uh, at the same time it, it means that the emir of Kuwait has to pay the American oil industry $7 billion to put the fires out. And oil is sparse, and you can ramp up the prices because demand is high, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's so many, uh, you know, ulterior oh, motives that comes with this as well. So, yeah, it's a classic. It's the classic geopolitical Machiavellian uh, game. That's right. But, so, anyway, so Matt Simmons, yes, um, yes. Uh, he's he's on TV. Basically, he's ranting. I mean, now he's livid. He's livid because Matt Simmons believes that he has uncovered a, a deception of the highest order here, and that is that. You know, the, the world is being told that the, uh, the well has been capped. But in reality, of course, it, in his opinion, it hasn't. And, and just for expediency, um, because obviously it's the, it's the start of the holiday season, uh, the vacation season. So for expediency, the general public are told that everything's done, everything's dusted, it's all over. So Matt um, uh, put this information out. I think it was around... A, about the 30th of July, mm 